Hello again. In my last video I talked about what MIDI controllers are and what they can do for us as guitarists. In this video I'm going to show you how I built my beautiful MIDI Crab. This is my own custom foot switch powered by an Arduino. In the next video in this series I'm going to talk about how I set it up and use it in Reaper and it's a bit complex but it's really cool and very powerful so you're going to want to check that out. For now we want to talk about building the physical hardware. As you can see, I have six buttons here, as well as two analog inputs, and it is all powered by an Arduino off of USB. This whole project probably cost me somewhere around $60, give or take, for the supplies. You could even do it for cheaper, but I wanted something that was going to be durable and hold up to some abuse. So firstly, the design. Now what did I want to get out of this controller? I wanted six buttons to basically control six different guitar tones, six different amp channels, if you will. Uh, they're actually entire effects racks, and it's a lot more than just an amp channel. But uh, I have six different tones, essentially, that I can control with the buttons. And then the two analog inputs allow me to use expression pedals. And uh, those allow me to change any parameter I want and can program them on the fly, like delay feedback or delay mix, reverb size, chorus wetness. I mean, <laughs> anything you want. If it's got a knob, you can control it. I went with the biggest enclosure I could find, which in this case is a 1590 double D. It's a big boy that measures about seven and a half by five inches. It's one of the largest standard pedal enclosure sizes. I wanted something big so that I could have all six buttons and not have my foot too cramped or accidentally hit two at once. So the size was important. This one was pretty cheap and it came pre-powder coated in white, so that was a big plus. The switches I used are momentary or soft touch switches, which are softer, easier to press, and cheaper. And uh, perhaps most importantly, they only have two solder lugs, making them much easier to wire than a nine pin true bypass switch would be. I'm also not sure if latching switches would work in the code for this, but the momentary worked just fine. I have them set to latching switches via the code, they could also be used as momentary switches for, say, setting tempos. Let's talk about the brains. I used an Arduino Uno for this project. They are fairly cheap to get, and they have all the necessary inputs. You could use an even cheaper Nano. However, it lacks the chip required to make it MIDI class compliant. And that's not necessary. It's optional. But if you convert it to be MIDI class compliant, it will be read as a MIDI device when you plug it in over USB. The way I use this currently, I have it set up with a loop MIDI port, which is free software, as well as the hairless serial to MIDI, which transfers the serial data of the Arduino into MIDI signals. That's also free. It works just fine. And uh, I may make it MIDI class compliant at some point, but uh, it's not necessary. The build was fairly straightforward. I carefully measured everything and marked out where I needed to drill and I just used a battery powered hand drill. My only real mistake in this process was putting the LEDs too close to the switches. And this is because I measured from the center of the switch rather than the base of the shaft, which is wider. Luckily, everything fit just fine. The LEDs are just a little uncomfortably close to the switches, 
but that's okay. If I was going to do it again, I would just move those LEDs a little further out. I would still have plenty of room on this. Drilling a pedal enclosure is pretty straightforward. Just double check your measurements before you actually start. Once I marked everything out carefully, I tapped it in with a hammer and a nail to just set a little indent where I wanted the drill to go so the bit doesn't wander. I start out with a very small bit and worked through a number of sizes until I had a big enough hole to use a stepper bit and um, that made the work really quick and easy. Make sure you have all your components on hand when you're doing the drilling too so you can test fit everything and make sure that your holes are large enough without being too large. The graphics for this were pretty simple. I made this design in Illustrator and printed it out using my laser printer and some vinyl sticker sheets. I meant to order clear vinyl sticker paper, but I accidentally got white. Thankfully the enclosure is white, but always check the description. If you have a laser printer, and I do recommend them, you can print easily on vinyl and make durable stickers quite easily. The wiring is probably the trickiest part of the build, but it's both frustrating and kind of fun at the same time for me. You will be doing a lot of soldering, so I hope you know how to solder if you want to do a project like this. Each button has a positive lead and a ground lead. I color coded the positive leads to make them easier to find and keep me from going crazy during the process. The ground leads are a big daisy chain of breadboard wire connecting them all to a single ground port. I use breadboard wire for everything in this project, but it would be a little cheaper to use stranded wire for most of the daisy chains and use the breadboard wire just for the last piece to connect it. The LEDs were similar. I have matching color coding with the buttons that they correspond to, as well as the color of the LEDs that they are, since they're all different colors. I put a resistor in line to the positive lead and then another daisy chain of grounds going to a second ground port on the Arduino. The buttons are going to digital pins D2 through D7, and the LEDs are going from D8 to D13. The input jacks I used are Marshall style barrel jacks. You could use any stereo jack for these. Both jacks share a common ground and a common 5 volt connection, and one has a lead going to A0 and the other has a lead going to A1. All in all, it was a lot of soldering, and it's a bit of a bird's nest in there, but it all worked and it wasn't terribly difficult to do. I think I knocked it all out in two or three hours, and um, it worked perfectly the first try. The only other physical thing to mention are these optional pedal toppers, but since I don't usually uh, have shoes on in my house. I like to use them for any pedals that are getting used inside. These ones are aluminum and uh, happen to get a set of six for like $13. I'll put a link to the ones I bought. These are the only ones I could find on Amazon that are small enough to fit on these momentary switches. Most guitar pedal switches are a 10 millimeter head and that will work with your standard pedal toppers. These are only eight and a half millimeters and uh, they're a little more unusual. So there's only one kind of switch that I could find that works with this, uh, but they weren't too expensive and they're aluminum and they're black, so they're nice. Now for the part everyone fears, the coding. Once again, I used the code written by Notes and Volts for MIDI controllers. He's got a great YouTube channel and talks about all sorts of cool stuff you can do with MIDI controllers, so definitely go check that out. I will give you a link to the exact code that I'm using on this uh, in case you want to make a copy of this pedal yourself but um, credit to him for actually writing the code. I did edit it slightly, and the only tricky thing with the code here was adding these LED states. Since I'm using this like a channel switcher, I wanted one LED and only one LED to come on and stay on for each channel and switch with each button that I press. Now that sounds like a fairly simple thing, and we've all seen guitar pedals that do that, like the um, Line 6, Pod Go, and Helix, and pretty much every digital or MIDI controller has that built in already. So I wanted mine to work that way too. The LEDs of course are totally optional, but otherwise I wouldn't have an indicator of which channel I'm on. So it does definitely have a functional purpose. I probably wouldn't have been able to figure this out on my own anytime soon. So I called in some professional help and <laughs> one of my friends who uh, codes for a living actually helped me out with this. It took a few hours of testing. I built a breadboard prototype with a couple LEDs and a couple buttons to try to figure out how this code communicated. And it took a long time. And we almost gave up by the end of the night, but we did eventually find it. In this code, the variable for the button is I. And so we just used a series of if statements um, and said, you know, if I equals zero, 
do this. And so each one has its own set of six LED commands that turns one on and turns all the others off. And it's not the most elegant solution, but it works perfectly. And uh, I'm happy that it works. If uh, you have any sort of better solution and want to tell me that the code sucks and there's a better way to do it, then please uh, go ahead. I'm happy for you to write some better code for me, but uh, I won't hold my breath. The only other thing to consider with these analog jacks is that they will generate a lot of useless MIDI data um, when the connection is open, when nothing is plugged in, they'll just sort of read nothing, I guess, digital noise, but it will come through as MIDI data and it'll send just a series of control changes that you don't want. So my solution for that right now has been to just uh, comment out one of them because I have one expression pedal. So when I use this, I have the expression pedal plugged in. The other jack is basically turned off in the code, just commented out and told it, don't look for this pot. And it's fine. It's still wired up. I can easily switch it around. It might be nicer to create like a hardware switch that I could turn on and off. I haven't done that yet. Just know that if you have a stereo jack wired up to your MIDI controller, it will generate stuff you don't want. And so you either have to have a pedal plugged into it, which is fine, or um, just comment it out of the code until you need to use it for something. So I think this is about all I have for you on the MIDI crab. I hope this has been deeply informative and maybe inspired you to make your own. This was the controller that I wanted to build for my uses and with the parts that I could find, it made sense. You could do a different controller. You could do it with less buttons or more buttons or I don't know, link a whole bunch of them together and make a monster pedal board. This is just a starting point. This is an idea and uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. It works great for me and it's it's got enough buttons for what I need. It's really kind of overbuilt. I wanted to go a little more than I thought I needed, but actually it turns out having six different tones is quite useful. One way I've been using this is with a clean, a crunch and a lead channel and then those same amps up here, but with delay added or delay and reverb. There's a million ways in the software you can set this up for different things. And you also don't have to use these buttons as channel switchers. You can use them to control actions in your DAW. Say you have a synth and a guitar hooked up, you could switch it to mute one and go to another channel. The possibilities are endless. It is simply a matter of how far will you go with it. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to support my channel and my crab-based endeavors.